resources at the boat in the dancing session. Yeah. I'm going to ask my boss for a salary for yeah. <laughs> um, So yeah, I'm, I'm Julian. Uh, I'm working with the International Committee of the Red Cross. Uh, I've been uh, in Kenya for the last eight years. Uh, I'm uh, in fact providing regional support. I've had several positions, uh, but currently I'm providing uh, support. I'm an engineer. The engineer uh, and providing support for the ACSC for the development of our large infrastructure projects uh, throughout the con continent. I have friends working with me. There are some of the contexts in East Africa that I know better than some others. I mean, said, um, for the moment, uh, directly supervising projects a little bit in Uganda, a lot in uh, DRC, uh, which I think is recently part of East Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've worked also a bit in uh, South Sudan. Uh, we have, I have other colleagues who know a bit better, uh, Somalia or Ethiopia, and places like that. And we work well in, well in the north. Um, so, yeah, the, maybe, yeah, I don't know if there's any addition on the video, you can ask later. Um, there's, uh, I've, I've been told a bit on short notice, so I'll make a short presentation after you can ask the questions. Don't be afraid that what has not been too clear to ask for further decisions. Um, basically, I'm going to introduce a bit uh, the, the ITST activities. When I'm saying in emergency here, in fact, uh, in fact, we can put the next. Uh, so I'm, I'm just uh, presenting a bit the, the ACSC, so International Committee of the Red Cross. Uh, we are a fashion grown independent national organization uh, with a humanitarian uh, mission. Uh, it derived from the Geneva Convention of something after the Second World War, So the mission is to provide protection and assistance uh, to the victims of war and other situations of violence in general conflicts. Uh, so that's why I think the, the, the previous uh, session was better maybe to talk about natural disasters and so on. For us, it's really more closely related to conflict uh, and war. Uh, and uh, so basically, we have offices in uh, around uh, 80 countries uh, with more than 18,000 people, so just covering all the main uh, contexts you can think of, of crisis, of war, from I don't know, Ukraine to South Sudan, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Libya, in Nigeria. But yeah, there's, there's many. It's going to list them all. Maybe um, next one. Myself, I'm part of what we call the WhatsApp. It's the Water and Habitat Unit. So basically, we are the NGDS uh, working on new infrastructures. Um, what we are trying to do is to make sure it's for others who in the, in, in the field of the assistance uh, and to mitigate the impact of the conflict to try to ensure that the affected population can benefit from uh, the essential, essential services. We can discuss a bit more on this set later. Mostly my presentation is going to be focused on the supply, uh, but there are also a bit of sanitation sometimes. We also have some places where we work also with energy and things like that. Um, so in our activities, uh, we have really strictly, uh, and, and that's why my presentation is going to be a bit broader than strictly the emergencies of the solutions for this are not very interesting in this world. Nowadays, we are trying really to broaden uh, our scope, our understanding on uh, to improve our response. Uh, so the emergencies, displacement of population, help other infrastructures. We love, work a lot to rehabilitate hospitals, health centers, and also for the water centers. Uh, we also work in the prisons um, to improve uh, the conditions in the places of detention, and which is my specialty, a bit uh, on the water supply systems, either in rural areas or for the centers. Put here a small map on where we are where we're having our activities, we have other offices, but where there are no uh, water and habitat activities, but these are uh, the, the, the main countries where we operate, and uh, we put those I put in, uh, in, uh, in red uh, are or were a bit the, the biggest operations there, although it's, it's changing a bit. Um, 
Um, maybe just for the next one now. Uh, just just to present a bit uh, how, how how we are. So I focused a bit on, on East Africa. Um, I put it's it's quite a, a, a dense uh, network of uh, offices. So in Kenya we have our regional delegation. Uh, so that's people like me covering either East Africa or like Africa as well are based. Uh, we have other delegations after I think in all the countries uh, of the region except in, in, uh, in Tanzania and Djibouti, it depends from Kenya, for example. Uh, after in Zambia, so that's what we don't have, but there's some in Mozambique. Uh, we have after in Rwanda, we have small offices in Uganda, but we also have after our main operations. For security reasons, uh, Somalia is covered from Nairobi. Uh, we do have small offices there. Um, but it, it's more places where we try to go and come back. Uh, otherwise, in Ethiopia, we have a delegation with many offices, um, both at a bit all the places where there are some tensions, so I think there are some between the Rio and the Somali community on the so we have offices there. There's, of course, the Rio and Tigray, so we have offices both in Kampala and Tigray region, but some also here in the Rio. Um, we also have in South Sudan several officers here and there. Uh, I've put only three, but in fact, there are more than them. We also have further in Sudan, we also have a delegation uh, with officers in South Sudan. Uh, and here, uh, also here in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in DRC, where we have officers in Burma, in Kavu, in Kenya, all over the world. So that's a bit where we are. So we are really present uh, in the in the region quite a lot, as unfortunately. Um, maybe this one. Just I wanted to say a small uh, word on, of course, the effect of conflict in terms of uh, on the systems, on the population. Uh, so on the system here, I'll focus a bit on water supply system. You have the damages, direct damages on the infrastructure. It can be voluntary, it can be, uh, you know, some missiles or what that then just for something, I think voluntary damages in some type of conflicts, it's even the war crime. Uh, but um, also sometimes it's just by mistakes or some, you know, the missiles don't land in the right place, it damages. So if you have, for example, uh, now it's not East Africa, but in Ukraine, we are working a lot to try to repair uh, and work on the water supply system or on the power system that are being damaged uh, during the war. Uh, there are also, unfortunately, and there I will expand a bit further on that, uh, indirect effects uh, of the, the conflict. Um, I'm just going to say a small something. When we are thinking of crisis, so yes, there are things like Ukraine, it's a big war, international war, there's people that are in the world. But a lot of conflicts, and, and especially, um, for example, in the, in the region, uh, we are beyond these moments of acute uh, crisis and emergencies, and the conflict has been lasting uh, for years, decades, uh, many decades even, if I'm taking, you know, Somalia, South Sudan, uh, even in Congo, I think all of them from the 90s, there's been really few moments of, uh, of, of, of peace. So we try also to think of our interventions more and more in the long term, because as I was saying, some of the direct effects is that uh, on the water systems, for example, there's less and less maintenance. I have another detailed explanation of that later. Um, the, the capacity to increase, I mean, while the conflict is there, the situation is not frozen. I have, for example, a picture of Juba in 2005, Juba in 2010. It's, it's, uh, it's like uh, four times, five times bigger. Uh, the population is booming and working a lot uh, except on, on Goma. I think in the 90s, there was 100, 100,000 people living there. Nowadays, it's beyond uh, a million. So within these 20 years, you have a war, you have a conflict, so there's no investment to increase. The, the growth of population is also fueled, and that's what I put here, uh, by the displacement. So people move in general, the cities, they feel it's a safer place, so they start all these displacement uh, camps, displaced people camps, and the things like that. Slowly they make new neighborhoods of the, of the cities. 
and uh, the systems, the water supply systems, for example, are not followed. So the capacity to increase is less, and even the systems are aging. So the longer you have on the conflict, uh, the more the effects accumulate and the more the, ser the services are, are, are going down. Also here, as I was saying, effects with population, displacements of populations, new settlements in favor of urban population, problems with the health. First, you have, of course, to treat the wounded, the direct effect, uh, but also after with the, the degradation of the living condition, you have more people who are more affected by the disease and so on. And the fact that all this influx puts, as I was describing for water, pressure on the systems of the health and so on. Plus, also after economic crisis. So, as we can see, uh, yeah, you, you, you have the, this is just at the beginning, you can say, yes, we can have a small intervention and here we have a small crisis, but the problems after uh, come and, and, and in general they accumulate to some uh, level of issues. As I was saying here, just two illustrations for the combination of factors, uh, for example, the pressure also on water resources. Through the water, uh, sorry, through the climate change, uh, the water resources are uh, reducing, they are under tension, but it's also combined with the increased demographics, the competitive use between agriculture, the livestock, the people drinking, not so much here, the industry, but in the world, it can also happen quite a bit. Uh, and, and all of this goes into combining the, the, the different uh, yeah, stress and, and pressure. Same as I was saying, for example, one thing that is important, uh, the institutional capacity, the authorities or the service providers, uh, they are, uh, I mean, while the crisis uh, continues, uh, you have brain drain, so the people who are the, the most qualified and educated, they are in general the first ones who can run away from the conflict, so the capacity to manage the system reduces uh, the access to the system sometimes, Water supply system, the source is not always at the same place as the city. Sometimes it's difficult to access it. Um, you have also, as I was saying, the, the, the reduction of uh, possibilities to finance development agencies, uh, the, the, the traditional donors. The state also is reducing its capacity because very often they will put the emphasis on smoothing the conflict. They will spend more money either on the military, but, but even sometimes. Um, I, I, we've had the case, for example, in Nigeria, where we had the authorities to develop a water project because they said, well, the money that was dedicated to this project has been used to accommodate the IDPs. So that's, that's, that's all another thing. After you can also embargoes on some material, for example, um, water supply users chlorine. Uh, if you use gas chlorine, for example, it can be used as bombs. Like that, so sometimes it's also a difficulty for the for people to manage to uh, the companies trying to seek the water system to import the material. So, <clears throat> this was one, the, the one I wanted to show a bit how the, 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 the conflicts and, and the emergencies. This is something based a bit more on some uh, Middle East uh, example, but you can easily adapt it. Animals, but I mean, you have the, 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 the first situation, everything is going fine. Then here they say damage to electrical transformers, for example, things have been attacked. So, first, well, the system goes down, uh, the, the, the staff are afraid, uh, they lack the safe access to the place, uh, they are not so happy. Uh, so, as I was saying, the, 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 the people start moving away, run away. So, the system starts to be a bit less and less well managed. Uh, the service is not so good. There's less state, so the people also sometimes they will start to make these pirate connections and help themselves with water. It's less maintained and so on. They can collect less money because people are more afraid to go. Also, the, the people have less capacity to pay and so on. So there's less budget. The salaries are not paid. So we are back here and the staff are feeling happy. Uh, the quality of the service con continue to reduce. They have no budget, so they have less. less, less <coughs> sorry. Less capacity to buy spare parts, to buy consumables, and so on. There's many sanctions, as I was saying here. Some people are even looting the systems. Either electric electricity supplies, you know, from the copper, or you can you can take it. Some people can also do whatever solar panels and any any type of uh, 
uh, systems that are, that are taken. So the system, it's really the water system that, that really doesn't manage to meet the population uh, beyond, uh, below, sorry, the, the threshold of, of public health for the quantity of water that is supplied regularly to the people. <coughs> sorry. So there's less, the, the, the service just starts to function alternatively and things like that. Uh, people are getting in less, less water, the system continues to degrade. Uh, after the rehabilitation, you know, when you don't do the maintenance, it, it's a bit like with your car. Uh, if you do it uh, regularly, you, you, one day you have less money, you start to spare, you start to spare, but then you don't need enough water and what, and then well, if you've not done enough maintenance, it's the engine that will blow. Same with the water system. You can reach a, a moment when you have so many uh, leakages and things like that that you have to rebuild the system. The variant is not really an option anymore. So here, after also the, the disparity of access uh, to the safe water, people also can have more disease, uh, are less happy with the services that they get. So it's increasing the social protection. It's contributing to the, problem, to the conflict, which lasts. Last. So, to just just to understand a bit that it's really, I mean, as I was saying, when you, you start to see an emergency, yes, okay, there are displaced people and you bring them water for a water truck. It, it can work from, I mean, yes, if people have nothing to drink, if they have no water, uh, it's, it's going to be a, 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 a problem, but you cannot do that on the long term basis. So, you also have to start thinking. Uh, beyond on how to work better to bring this <clears throat> So here, as I was saying, what I wanted to, to show here, for here, uh, it's a bit what we try to do between linking the humanitarian and the development world, where we have, as the humanitarians, strictly like life-saving activities, these short emergency activities, and to make a bit the bridge with what the development world is doing, with more planning on trying to think long term and things like that. So it's a bit the illustration, but it's it's also here where you can see that you have the development challenges, what they call the old problems. So the, the growth of the urban population, the, the financial problem for the, the recovery of the cost uh, for the water prices, water scarcity, and things like that, which are problems that are met regularly by development and where crisis. As we were saying, destruction of infrastructure, mass movement of people, tension between communities, and the shortages, and so on, uh, are a new problem that's added to it. So, how to work on it? Uh, as I was saying, it's a bit more than I have here. Um, responding to emergencies. Uh, so, first, working well, so not waiting for the emergency, but having better preparedness, contingency plans, lead faster in the reaction. And to try to mitigate this moment where you have the acute uh, emergency, or at least to make it as short as possible, but also combine it with a broad analysis on the problems uh, and uh, to combine this immediate with them with long term improvements. This is more a bit how we try to work uh, because that's, as I was saying, the, 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 the bigger uh, you see the problem. Uh, you need also to bring different expertise, different partners in. One thing that we work uh, quite uh, a lot and one of our favorite partners are the, the, the other uh, the cross movement, so the national societies, country, so on. Uh, for example, here we try also, and see, I see the work we do, uh, we are a lot, this one for the engineers, um, focus or working on what I would say the, the, the heart part of the work, which is the infrastructure, construction, uh, doing the work. But there's all a part which is more linked to the community when you're talking for example, this, uh, about sanitation and so on. There's a lot about hygiene promotion, work with communities. And in general, the Red Cross partners, better they are really more connected with the communities and so on. So we try to develop projects in partnership with them where we will take care of the main infrastructure. They will put members of Also working with the government because in general all these public services are 
managed or at least uh, overseen with the government. So we have to understand the institutional framework in which we work for the good solution. Working more and more with development agencies to benefit of their expertise, uh, but also here financing institutions. Uh, we try, we, we, we see uh, in general, um, Financing institutions have the capacity when you suddenly need to rebuild the whole system or the I mean, There's a lot of places in the countries where, where, where we're working where there's absolutely no water supply system. The big one, ICRC, um, I don't know how to say, I think on an average, relatively big operation, our budget is a million, a million dollars per year. That we have to spend half on urgencies, but also on rehabilitation, construction, and everything like that. If you want to build the new water treatment plant, the new system, and so on, you quickly go beyond 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes. That's why we have to be able to try to mobilize this funding, working with communities, other humanitarian actors, either in the system or some other NGOs, and also work quite a bit with the private sector. Either for expertise, consultancy, and so on, but also practice that works. And in some countries, the operators of the system are uh, private functions. Um, I, I just give here two examples of projects and activities we, we've conducted. And for example, in, in, uh, in Ethiopia, uh, we are really trying to combine a whole panel uh, of, of activities from really the emergencies. Of water trucking when there's displaced people and things like that. We just try to help them install a better ring. That's also in case sometimes of droughts or when there's really a humanitarian crisis, bringing uh, some supplies, making some small repairs, there's been quite some destructions uh, during the latest uh, conflict in, in Tigray on the water uh, stations. Some, some of the things were looted and there was as a generator, try to fix the pumps, things like that. In parallel, also working with the rural communities for rural water supply, there's a beautiful program of developing small boreholes, putting hand pumps, replacing, repairing the hand pumps, and so on, developing solar systems. Um, and after, we have a couple of larger projects we try to develop for urban water supply. So, there we try to understand a bit better. The dynamics of the cities where we work, so there are some master plans, and then also to work on expanding the networks uh, and operating the systems. So, yeah, a few pictures showing, for example, yeah, so that's the emergency part, uh, and here we are really expanding the networks. That was a strange. Maybe the next one, which I think is the last one. The second example I wanted to give was uh, in, uh, in Congo. Um, in North Kivu, so that's all the, in the region among Goma. So, yeah, this place camp, the people have come. We are bringing truck, trucks to give them water and things like that, making distribution of the house, dairy <coughs> can, buckets, and so on. But after, we are also working in the rural communities where some, people, some of these people come from, also for those who remain developing some uh, gravity water supply systems, so that's spring catchments, systems, and so on. Trying to be a little then. And after we have a larger scope about water supply. So that was, for example, a, a master plan that we need for Goma that is trying to plan for the population in the future so that the infrastructure that we build um, manage to uh, uh, take into consideration the, the goals of the, of the city in, in the future. Improvement of the water supply uh, efficiency, that's, for example, leakages. Right? And we have mutation development station. Yeah, that's just a bit. So, a few more reports and so on, uh, links to that. Uh, I think you're sharing your presentation now. Yes. Yes. yes, okay. So, if you want further reading, you can click on this reports.